Hi, hello. Welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is May 6th, 2023. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. Feeling pretty all right. Uh, overall, like I'm, I'm starting the day feeling like, oh, it's still in me. Like whatever's, you know, still in my chest, still gunked up. But then as I get operating, I feel a little bit better, and it's just like a bit of a tinge. It's just a little bit. Um, so, you know, hey, better than yesterday. I'll take it. Uh, as for the food corner, nothing to report as of yet. We're chilling. Maybe I might have a little snacky poo. I don't know. Have a, you know, have a meal, and we'll talk about that tomorrow probably. Um, so, yeah, we can go ahead and just get into some news, get into the happenings. Um, from CNN... King Charles III and Queen Camilla are crowned. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. (laughs) Uh, King Charles III has been crowned during a majestic and deeply religious ceremony at Westminster Abbey in London. Um, so the royal family has been att- is, you know, attending, um, you know, at least all the big ones, all the major big wigs. Um, even Prince Harry came. Um, but notably, his wife did not. Megan, uh, her and, you know, the kids are staying at home uh, for reasons, whatever. Um, so, you know, there's a bit tea, tea to sip there, I guess, whatever. But obviously, this whole ceremony is just a big kerfuffle. Um, I know a lot of people, when this gets mentioned, they're like, but like, isn't he already king? And it's like, yeah, no, automatically when the queen died, he immediately was like, boom, he's in power, but they have to have this whole ass little ceremony, you know, just so everybody remembers. Right. So, you know, and of course they bring out all these fancy attire and all these jewels and it's this whole fucking affair literally into like the millions of dollars. Now, granted, um, they are saying, hey, we're scaling it back this year. We're reusing the king's gloves for his little sausage fingers. <laughs> um, you know, we're not pulling out all the jewels, just some of the jewels, we're keeping some up there. Granted, I'm like, yeah, so we don't show off all of the things you've stolen and like are now hoarding for your own personal wealth. You yeah, know, it's cool. Why don't you keep those on the shelf? Um, but they're, they're, they're doing their flex. They're, they're having their moment. This is all, you know, to show like, hey, you know, this is a a big pomp and circumstance. And like, don't you want to be a part of this fanfare? And and I'm sure there are some people on the ground that totally love this. They're eating this up. They're having the time of their lives right now because that's that's what's happening this Saturday. Um, And and cool. I don't want to yuck anyone's yum at the end of the day. If, If that's this is what you're into, if you love fucking old world colonialism and like you just want to like yeah woo go pasty people y'all really rock i'm so happy you're alive (laughs) then do that that's cool um to the people who are like obviously using this moment to like say hey i get the day off i get like these bank holidays off like i'm gonna like have some drinks with my friends and hang out and do my thing like awesome do that that's that's the real win those are the real winners um, I guess to the royal family's point, to um, the government's point, because they are the ones footing this fucking, I guess, estimated $125 million bill. At least that's from the CNBC. Now, granted, when I say the government, I really mean the taxpayers. So they're the ones paying the bill. Um, and, and that's the thing. I'm glad that I have friends that, you know, thank you via the internet, whatever that I, I see in my, my feed leading up to this whole event today. And they're like, dude, this is so silly. This is so dumb. Um, like, I mean, one, you can just get into the point of like, do you even want a king? Do you even need a king? Like you, you already have a running system of government. You could just get rid of these guys. They don't need to be siphoning off millions of dollars every year from you guys, let alone this event. You don't even need it. Um, But let's say you want to keep it. Let's say you just love the sentiment. You could scale this down even further. You don't have to just shorten the track. Why don't you just make it like like a little bit of a paper ceremony, something that just looks like what you guys are already doing with your government or even like what we do, like because we have an inauguration. That's a flex for us. That's our, I guess, version. But um, I don't know. They, They are estimated to have a lot of revenue generated from this from 
which another thing, uh, as much as it, it seems like maybe I'm clowning on, you know, the people who are like going dummy for King Charles, it's crazy to me that there are people who were like, oh, I'm going to hop on a plane and I'm going to go. I'm going to go to England and I'm going to I'm going to go to the UK, whatever the fuck. And I'm going to have some fish and chips and, and see this dude put a crown on his head and, and, and roll around. That's crazy. You have so much else you could do with your time. But this is an historic event. Oh, wow. Like, I, I just I couldn't be me. Could not be me with my broke ass. Hell no. I got better things to do with my fucking time and money <laughs> and support that kind of shit. Um, so that's my two cents. That's just something that's going on right now in the world. I figured we'd talk about it. Um, and some other news uh, from CNN. Leaders of Sudan's warring factions agree to seven-day ceasefire, South Sudan says. So, sadly, this conflict's still ongoing, no resolution. Um, there has been at least a few ceasefire that, ceasefires that have been tried. None that have actually been, like, concrete actually worked, but at least there's been, like, you know, patches of it. Um, now, uh, the Sudanese armed forces and the paramilitary rapid support forces, also known as the RSF, um, have agreed to a seven day ceasefire of which I believe we are on the fourth day. This was four days ago, um, as of recording, uh, the foreign ministry of South Sudan said in a statement Tuesday, uh, the two sides also said they would send representatives for peace talks to be held at an agreed venue of their choice. Um, let's see. But, I mean, we'll see how that goes. Uh, the leaders of the SAF and RSF, respect, respectively, that's the word, <laughs> are Abdel Fatah al-Burhan and uh, Mohammed Habdan Delgallo. Um, so, I mean, we'll see. It definitely kind of seems that um, uh, the SAF kind of has the power, but at the same time, the RSF is very entrenched in a lot of key areas, and sadly, they're just refusing to back down, and there's just a lot of ongoing fighting, and there's just all these civilians who are caught in the middle. Um, I think the last time we covered this on the pod, let's see, um, diplomatic officials had kind of out of the city. But a lot of, you know, people from, you know, other countries were still left in Sudan and were kind of stuck. So uh, this kind of ceasefire was kind of good to potentially get more people out. But, I mean, there's still just a lot of fear. I know that there's been some patrols even with, like, armed drones and things of that nature to protect, you know, people trying to get to and fro. Naturally, trying to get in and out of the city is so risky. It's so hard to do. People are taking advantage of that and like cranking up the fares and doing the most with that in terms of like the the, the way to the paying to get out. So it's just it's really hard on a lot of people, let alone the actual people who live in you know the Sudanese people themselves. You know, not just people from other countries. Um, you know, saying, hey, like, you know, I've, I've stuck it out this long and it's like, now it's come to this, I gotta go, but you know, it's, it's very hard and you're in a situation with no power, no electricity, no food. Uh, it's, it's rough on the families, it's rough on all these kind of people. You don't know if you're going out to get food and that's the last time you're going to see your family or, you know, whatever. Even if it is you just saying, okay, let's go, let's leave. You don't know if you're going to make it. So you know, hard times, scary shit. Um, let's see, what else did I want to cover here? Let's move on to the states uh, from the Associated Press. Um, man killed three, then self, in rural Georgia town. Excuse me. A uh, man recorded by a security camera fatally shooting his manager Thursday at a fast food restaurant in rural South Georgia, is also suspected of killing his mother and grandmother at their nearby homes uh, before taking his own life, authorities said. Um, the security footage showed um, a 26-year-old, Kentavis White, who was the shooter. Um, he shot um, 
His manager, after asking her to come to the door, uh, the manager was Amita, I'm sorry, Amia, Amia Smith, 41 years old. Um, she thought he was coming in to work for the day. So she unlocks the door, let him in. He shoots her and then um, walks in and just shoots himself. Um, let's see. The two others were, were his, um, let's see here. His 50-year-old mother and 74-year-old grandmother, who were, like, n- uh, next-door neighbors, um, or at least they lived nearby of each other, and he shot them earlier in the morning, um, and the police were called, but I believe they didn't at least, I think they might have been called around 1, but then they didn't get there till 6 a.m., and this takes place on Thursday, <clears throat> but, um... They, you know, immediately came and got the bodies and then, you know, everything unfolds at the McDonald's, but, um, it's not sure exactly what the motive is. Um, but I believe he shot each victim multiple times. Uh, let's see here. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a sad state of affairs. Uh, I know I cover a lot of fucking shootings, um, a lot of fucking violence and, you know, it, it's sad that that's kind of the news, <laughs> but I, you know, I, I do try to, you know, add some levity when I can. Um, but sometimes there's just not much you can really do. And it's not like the last story I'm going to be giving you guys is much brighter. It's not brighter at all. Um, it's just a difference of, uh, weapons really um all right let me take my break (laughs) i'm already in the weeds anyway Ooh, from the associated press former california college student arrested in three stabbings so like i said we're talking from from gun to a knife whoo A 21-year-old who was a student at the University of California, Davis, until last week, was arrested on accusations of fatally stabbing two people and wounding another in attacks that terrified the quiet uh, college community, uh, police said Thursday. Carlos Dominguez was taken into custody Wednesday after 15 people called in reports of a person, person who matched the description of the suspect near a city park where he's accused of stabbing the second victim to death, said Davis Police Chief Darren Pytel. Uh, Pytel did not disclose a motive for the stabbings, which took place over a span of days, starting with the discovery of the first body, April 27th, and said it was unclear if Dominguez knew the victims. Those killed were a 50-year-old homeless man, well-loved in the community, and a 20-year-old UC Davis student. The third victim was a homeless woman who was attacked in her tent and is recovering as of Monday night. Uh, He was out wandering in a neighborhood where the second homicide had occurred. He had a large knife and a backpack, wearing the same clothes from the third stabbing. Um, So, yeah, it's definitely a very you know, an offshoot situation, it seems like. Um, oh, also, the names, uh, at least of the two who died, David Henry Bro and uh, Kareem Abou Najim. Um, but yeah, like I said, they, they don't have the motive. And um, it seems, though, he was a third-year student majoring in biological sciences until April 25th when he was separated for academic reasons. So maybe that was like the thing that caused this kind of break in him. But um, obviously it's just a very sad situation. Um, you know, we'll see what unfolds and potentially a trial, things like that. Um, but yeah, that's all I really got for this episode. Um, if you'd like to support the podcast, there is a way. <laughs> I have a patron, patreon.com slash Isaiah News. Um, $5 a month gets you access to bonus content. I do an episode every week and, um, that's just for the newsies. Um, also you get a hot link to the discord, 
uh, which is for free. But um, you just, um, just got to hit me up for that, and I'll, I'll give it to you. But I think it comes in, like, the email when you um, go ahead and uh, become a newsy. And um, with newsy status, you get a shout-out once a month. I'll say your name on the podcast. And then you also get to plug any kind of project. So, you know, you're doing a thing. I'll say, hey, you know, my my guy, my lad, my my person, my homie, um, they're doing a thing. And I want to tell you all about it. And, um, you know, essentially, it's just free advertising, baby. Um, also, I love talking about news. So, you can always plug me your news. And, um, you know, probably wind up talking about it on the podcast. <coughs> mm. Excuse me. Wow. Uh, but free ways to hit me up, IsaiahNews1 at gmail.com. And then I'm also on Facebook. I'm also on Twitter. Uh, you can hit me up on comments, on the Instagram, on the YouTube. Also, feel free to scri- subscribe to the YouTube, to the Spotify, to the Apple podcast, whatever. <coughs> Helps you find me easier and uh, bigger number, better person. <laughs> I'll cry. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being a friend. And hopefully I see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye. Mwah.